Greetings, flesh wound horror freaks, and welcome to a brand new episode of TV Terror Talk. I am Daniel Shine. I hope you're having an awesome Halloween season. And that is producer Todd Loya. Good evening. Pugs Dread. Namaste. And Mike Kruger. What's up, you sick motherfuckers? So we're going to be covering Fear Itself this year, which was the uh, often forgotten about uh, sort of follow-up evolution of Masters of Horror, uh, which uh, yeah everybody certainly missed when that went away. And a lot of people surprisingly forget that Fear Itself was even a thing. So we're going to be running down those episodes and uh, comparing them also to Masters of Horror because there's more than a few people that think the stories were better in Fear Itself. So we'll see if that's true as we go along. Um, <laughs> I just Yeah, this was my first time watching it. I know Kruger's too. Yes. Um, Pugs, you also? Or did you watch these originally? I saw them when they aired. I don't remember them that well. There's one in particular that I remember well enough and that one well, we'll get yeah. there. Once it went from Showtime to Network, I was like, eh, I'll catch it when it comes out on DVD. Yeah. <laughs> now, like, what, 15 years later, I'm finally watching them. <laughs> <laughs> no uh, deformed BJs or, uh, you know, anything. <laughs> Skinnings, meat. Shout litter. out, Jennifer. But <laughs> there is one thing that's miles miles above on this one. Puck, or Cougar, you want to talk about the awesome theme song? Jesus Christ, dude! It's so fucking bad. I mean, it may, when, it may, it literally makes me want to fucking st- Freddy Krueger a fucking Q-tip into my ear. I mean, I fucking can't stand it. The stupid na 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 na. Oh my god! And then like you think it's over, and these fucking cocksuckers just go and, and like just out of nowhere, like you think they stop with the stupid na 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 thing, it's and then right before, Lala. Or whatever the fuck it is. Right before they close, they, they just do it real quick. Uh, again, just go, nah, nah, nah. I'm like, fuck you. Every time it happens, it drives me crazy. That was... <laughs> you can need a dick for making me listen to that again. <laughs> when they were promoting this show, that was one of the big selling points. Like, oh, Serge Shaken is going to do the music. Great. And it's just. But if you listen to <laughs> the, whole, la, la, la. the whole song, though, if you listen to the whole song, I don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck. It's annoying <laughs> as shit and stupid. And comparing that to the Masters of Horror fucking theme that's badass and catchy as fuck i mean it, it's dog shit dog i still think it's catchy well that would make sense stand as like <laughs> it's not bad i, I remember it. oh my there. god this is candy man bad there we go <laughs> zero on the theme well candy man has one of the greatest even the new one yeah okay this sport. is the black christmas re-remake of theme songs <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah. So, yeah, we are going to be covering all of them. I'm sure the song will come up again, but uh, <laughs> fuck me. <laughs> uh, so yeah, you know, this was the move to network TV. Obviously, th- that meant uh, some of the heavier gore and certainly the the nudity and the sex was gone good too. Stuff. But uh, <laughs> uh, but well, but revisiting this. There were a lot of things I forgot about. Uh, so we'll, we'll kick it off. We'll go right into episode one, which was The Sacrifice. And this one was from director uh, Breck Eisner. And um, and writers? <clears throat> yes, and writers Mick Garris and Del Howison. Who and is the owner. Of Dark Delicacies, yeah. There you. we go. I was Dark sure you guys. shout out. Yeah, he and his wife uh, run Dark Delicacies, which... Uh, as you guys know, uh, being from you know California, it was like horror heaven. Basically, it was just like really one of the last horror shops, specifically cool. for horror shops. The, uh, the signings were the selling point, I think. Really, yeah, yeah. The signings were you know you could go in and get a lot of exclusive posters, and you know if you're on eBay a lot, I'm sure you've probably seen posters from dark delicacies signings and yeah and uh he also does the uh, dark delicacies horror anthology uh books as well and 
Yeah, so he's the writer on this, and the sacrifice uh, is <clears throat> taking refuge in an isolated, snow-covered fort. Four criminals find secrets, dangers, and three alluring sirens. Uh, all right, and so I should throw out here, uh, we're, we're going to be covering these with spoilers, so, you know, if you're... If you haven't watched it yet, you may want to watch them and then pick up. Uh, and and real quick, and you can watch them right now on Vudu for free yes. with ads. Also, want to add the order we're going in is the official like order of the network or of the release of the network of the episodes. The DVDs are in a slightly different order for some reason. Like the Masters yeah. of Horror. Yeah. Are, okay. The Blu-rays. I, the Blu-rays. Oh yeah, the like Blu-rays are. The that's right. Place. That's right. I, okay. <laughs> If you watch around. along on Voodoo, that is in order. Yeah. Yeah. Well, even the order listed everywhere else, it is just the DVDs have a weird order. Mm-hmm. So. Just so want to put that go. out there. We're not skipping. Uh, was it Eater? We're we're doing it in the correct air date order. Yeah. Yes. Uh, all right. So uh, this director, if you're unfamiliar, uh, what he did the Crazies remake. He directed that. He also directed the Vin Diesel film Last Witch Hunter. <laughs> Both later, though, which was interesting. It was after this episode. Uh, so that that's kind of, you know, he certainly wasn't uh, a master of horror. But, hey, it's not called master of horror anymore. So I'll give a pass there. Um, this is based on the short story Lost Heard by Del Howison. Uh, so go and check that out if you want to compare. And, uh, yeah, so some familiar faces as we go in here as the criminals... Uh, kind of enter this fort uh jesse plemons who you should recognize he is in everything right now he's uh he's not so thin anymore he's kind of a chubby dude yeah he was just in uh jungle cruise jungle cruise he's gonna be in antlers he plays the cop in that and he's just a character actor that's popping up all over the place he replaced uh, he, he replaced that one that off himself Yes, yes. <laughs> Who often so? Oh, what's his name? I can't think of it right now. Um, Capote. Capote? Uh, Philip Seymour. Oh, Philip Seymour. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> he's, he, honestly, all the roles he would have got, he's just slid right in That's there. That's fucking funny. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he, he, got, he, got, he got fat, and his career <laughs> expanded as well as his waistline. He was also uh, in Fargo. Oh, oh sure. yeah. He's a re- he's a great yeah. actor. He yeah, he's really fucking is. excellent. Yeah. Um, in fact, like when I was looking at him, I was like, "Holy shit, this guy was thin! I forgot." <laughs> uh, and we also have Rachel Miner. Uh, oh, such a sweet lady. She has uh, MS now, so she's not oh. uh, really acting anymore. But uh, she, uh, she was in Bully, uh, one of the not Kid yeah. Park, one of Larry Clark's earlier films. Second she film. was she married Macaulay Culkin back in the day. Um, so, yes, I was cool seeing her. Uh, we also get Walter Phelan, who plays uh, the uh, the head vampire, of course, uh, Dr. Satan. Uh, so there's there's a horror pedigree. Sophie, Sophie Monk, who was in a lot of horror films around this time. Well, what's, uh, as, what's the guy's name? The, the, the guy, uh, the older brother, the one with the leather jacket? Because he. he... That was... uh, I don't remember. That was the name in, in the show? No, no, the, the older brother with the leather jacket. Well, anyway, he's the guy that does The Last of Us. He's the, the main guy. He does the voice and stuff, so that's like his big thing. Okay, so yeah, there's some horror pedigree all over this episode. Uh, Rachel Miner was a, a recurring character on Supernatural as well. Um, pretty cool little story. Um, this This one I know in particular they had like really heavy restrictions uh, to the point where they were like wiping blood off of uh, (laughs) some characters after a scene because they thought it was too much. Um, And Hey, scary vampire, Walter Phelan uh, did a great job as he always does. Again, Dr. Satan, I, I would have, wouldn't have minded seeing a sort of prequel thing where we get to see more of him. uh, from. One day, maybe. Yeah, absolutely. It's not too late. Um, And yeah, this one in particular, and I don't think it's the case with every episode. This one, I think, would have benefited as being a Masters of Horror episode more so than being a fear itself, because you could see some areas where they had to 
hold back. But it's a decent vampire story. There's suspense. All the actors are game. Um, and, uh, yeah. One logical issue that I had personally was like, well, people have tried for years to kill this thing. I was like, really? Because I think you could come up with a way to take that vampire out if you really wanted to for years and years. Uh, so that I don't know. That didn't quite gel with me. But um, Kruger, what did you think of this one? Um, I thought the acting was definitely one of the strongest things about it. The vampire, I wasn't particularly... I don't know. I didn't really like the design of it. I thought it was a little basic and... Yeah, I, I like you know the guy did that played the vampire did a fine job, but the makeup behind it I thought was kind of weak and just basic and should have looked some maybe a little bit more creative. Uh, but the story was decent, and you know I did like the idea of them you know feeding this thing in the middle of the woods and uh, trying to keep and the reason of you know trying to keep it off from the world and it from escaping and stuff and kind of having that civil duty I did like that um but then like you know just the way it ends it just kind of like I was just like okay um it, it, I, it's decent and I liked it but you know it wasn't anything special and if it was a masters of horror episode I mean it would be acceptable but and like for this it's acceptable but it's definitely not anything like special by any means and that's it's my thing with it it's like this was the first one out of the box maybe there's a reason this isn't the first one on the DVD set it sure. it it, it should have really like set the tone for the series and it was just underwhelming for me so it kind of like wasn't like I, like I said, maybe the DVD order was correct. Yep. <laughs> the right way to go, at least. And that ending, why didn't she just stake him? It's like, okay, it's over now. Goodbye. I'm going to go enjoy Starbucks and video yeah. games. Well, that's all she knows. So she's just pro probably a little bit relieved, too, that she doesn't have to go out into the scary fucking world. Oh, I think yeah. she wanted to. Didn't you see her face lighting up before he went and ruined Everyone it? Everyone thinks they want to do something, so it's time to show up. Well, I, I don't know. I thought she found some comfort. Like I, I know it doesn't show, but like something in in me is like, oh, I know how to do this. I guess I'll stay here and take care of this and be in my familiar surroundings. That's what I took from it. Like fuck, I gotta like. That's the realization. Like I gotta do this. Yeah. I I like the story. I thought it was pretty cool. Uh, maybe I'm grading on a scale because it, it was for NBC. Uh, so I thought it was pretty fucking rad. I liked the settings. Actors were great. I loved all the characters. Uh, I thought the vampire looked pretty cool, again, for network television. Uh, yeah, I thought it was I thought it was cool. Nothing like super fucking special, but again, it's for television. It, it's going to be hard to be. But I thought they worked around, it, around the... Um, um, gore. Go, yeah, the gore uh, pretty well. For, for, it was just, it was suspenseful. It also I, I paved think. the way for Hannibal, so fuck yeah. <laughs> oh, Hannibal got away with a lot more. <laughs> yeah. I was gonna say, um, but a little little bit later than this too. So there's that. But yeah, I mean, I, and I think having the uh, uh, you know like Sophie Monk too, you would have gotten a lot more out of that on Masters of Horror. Uh, I don't think I'll be saying this about every episode because this is still like some of the mediocre episodes of Masters of Horror. This is certainly above that. So, in comparing it, does it does it rise to the level of the the really good Masters of Horror? No, it doesn't. It's it's pretty just an you know average episode of you know a horror series, a forty mm -hmm. four minute horror series. Well, why don't we rate it then? Uh, oh, absolutely. So uh, uh, zero to five stars. We're just going to rate them just like we do the movies. And uh, on this one, I am a I'm going to I'm going to round it. I'm going to give this one a three, actually, on strength of the acting. I like the actors and I was entertained by it. I did. My biggest issue, though, too, was like, well, you tried for years. Vampires can be killed. How, how can you have tried for years? Well, maybe it's the same cycle. Like they killed the other one and now I'm stuck with. The new guy. Well, yeah, but it's not a literal curse. I mean, they're not trapped in a loop. I don't they kind of are. Right, well, that's fine. Don't uh, overthink it, I guess. But it's an entertaining episode. I'll, I'll go. I thought it was four, a four out of five. I liked it a lot. I'd rewatch it again. 
Um, I'm actually with you, Dan. I'm a three out of five. I mean, I thought it was, you know, I liked it, but nothing special either. So uh, what about you, Todd? I'm the lowest. I'm shocked. I'm two and a half. Well, average. It was, it was average for me. All over if she, it, if it could have been fixed with the ending, have her just stake him, and he's like, "All right, fuck this, just boom," and then she's like going to Starbucks. She's getting a chalupa. Well, are, are like, are Starbucks slipping you gift cards? That's like the third time you dropped their name. Starbucks is delicious. Well, it's pumpkin yourself. spice season. It is delicious, Todd. I'll kill right. like somebody who's damned anyways for a pumpkin spice signature latte, dude. So would you? Come on. I would. There you go. There you go. A See, cold brew. I'm fucking down. Now, if we're talking yummy mummy cereal or some fruit brute, there may be some homicide happening. So. <laughs> oh, now I want to watch. Uh, what is it? Um, burying the X. The X yeah. yeah. I still want to taste that ice cream flavor. God damn it. We have pumpkin ice cream at our local ice cream. Place. No, no, I don't mean that. They had the fruit brute ice cream. That the moment I fell in love with the Dario. <laughs> 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 I'll take one of each, please. <laughs> You're right. Two scoops. You can't, you can't go wrong with Joe Dante. Uh, all right. Uh, gentlemen. Uh, I guess we'll cannot close. say the name of the next episode. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Fo- uh, catch us for our, our episode two. Uh, and uh, we'll be going straight through the and series. We're doing it right now. Oh. Yeah, Dan. Episode two. Come on. Yeah, we're doing it right now. Oh, we're doing them. Okay. My bad. That's why it says episode That's... one, two, and three. <laughs> My bad. Three. My bad. I messed that up. My bad. And I'm not cutting it out. Uh, <laughs> that's fine. We botch once in a while. It's all good. We. Uh... <laughs> what the fuck am I being punished for? <laughs> I like it. Now I'm all jazzed now, even though No, I'll be I'm the one fucking being punished the fuck, Todd. What the fuck did I do to you, you asshole? It's too funny. <sighs> but again, listen to the whole song. I think you'll No, no, no let's... <laughs> Tell us about Pugs. What's the next episode called? Spooked. All right, oh, yeah. yes. So that episode uh from director well, you brad, can't say it <laughs> you puss it's from director brad anderson and uh this one follows a private eye has to face his demons while on a stakeout in a haunted house uh all right so getting into this one um this director of course known for session nine which he did before the machinist uh yeah. he also did the episode of Masters of Horror Sounds Like, which is kind of like a a mixed episode. I know some people that really like that one, others not so much. But um, And uh, this stars Eric Roberts as Harry Siegel, the um, uh, cop turned P.I. And uh, all right, so we'll get right into this one. Um, There is some other horror pedigree here in this episode as well. Jack Noseworthy, who plays Rory, uh, was... Event Horizon and nah. uh, <laughs> a, shut up, Don. And a really it good and Don't a me. really good episode of the New Outer Limits with Malcolm McDowell, which I desperately don't ever want to review with you guys but it's a good all right episode. Malcolm Mc... we're writing um, that one down that's then. what we're doing next year right? uh we also got Cynthia Watros who a lot of people recognize from Lost of course so all right uh so I'm a big fan of this one, but I'm going to tag you in first, Kruger. Uh, what did you think of uh, this episode? Um, this is another one I thought really wasn't anything special. Like, it started off strong with, like, the opening scene with the cop, you know, slashing to some dude. And then I thought, you know, the whole thing with him losing his badge for, you know, going too far. And, uh, like, I liked all of that. But then... Like, I kind of already expected right away he was going to, you know, be haunted by that shit at some point. So I found the story just kind of predictable. And, like, the strongest thing I think about this one that kind of prevented me from hating it is, like, I thought the flashback sequence with, uh, you know, him accidentally killing his brother and his dad making him bury the body and shit like that. I thought that was kind of fucked up. But then just the way it leads up to the conclusion with the... uh, 
the sister of the brother, uh, just that that whole part just se- seems so fucking predictable to me. And the sister had a fucking extremely distracting, uh, terrible fucking makeup effect for like a scar on her neck, and it just it looked like shit, and it was jarring as fuck to me. I I, I couldn't take my eyes off of it, so it just like it, it fucked up the rest of the whole thing for me. Put that uh, scarf I, back on, bitch. <laughs> yeah, I was just I was just like, dude, you guys couldn't have fucking did something a little bit better than that. I mean, you literally saw it fucking coming off, man. I mean, it was pretty bad. I was just like, all right, this is uh, this is, has me completely out of it. So overall, I just think it's like average. It wasn't anything special, but it wasn't terrible either. There was stuff I liked about it, but I don't think I'd ever watch it again. How about you, Bugs? Um, I expect a whole lot more from Eric Roberts. He did not deliver it here for me. I... I I could could not care about him. I don't know what was going on, but there's just some. I don't know if he was overacting, underacting. He just wasn't doing it for me. I f- I feel that a little bit too. I think he was overacting a little bit, uh, especially towards the especially towards the end when he's just kind of like screaming towards himself and stuff. Yeah. Like, I was just like, oh, this is starting to get bad. Yeah. I, so like that took me out. Like this one was just. Okay, I like the the child murder, of course. That's always gonna fucking tickle my fancy. But uh, other than that, it was whatever. I would not revisit this one. It's a fart. <laughs> I I'm I'm with you guys. I I felt this one was on par with the last one. I did like this one a little better, but that could be because of Eric Roberts. But not off to a good start, in my opinion. Yeah, it was annoying no, black partner it irritated the fuck out of me. Yeah. That's uh, you know who that is. Um, did you watch? Did you ever watch Walker Texas Ranger? I did back oh, in the day, but only the, the end credits before Raw. The, <laughs> the, the partner's son, Lawrence Gilliard Jr., is this oh. guy. It's the son of Chuck Norris's partner on that. Um, I actually, I actually, it's just about a dude that drives a truck around and beats the shit out of somebody every episode. I mean, you know, it's it was fun before or after Raw. Um, so I actually did like this episode. Eric Roberts, I mean, he's one of the B movie kings, so he, he's made a lot of shit. But every once in a while, he'll have something come out that makes you remember that this guy can really fucking act. I mean, Runaway Train, Pope of Greenwich Village, The Dark uh, Knight. You know, yeah, sure, Dark Knight. Yeah, he pops up in in different things once in a while. Not so often anymore, but. Uh, but he can act. I actually thought he was the the strong uh, presence in this episode. I thought Cynthia Watros was good. Jack Noseworthy was creepy. Uh, and uh, I like this one. I actually felt for him. Uh, I, I feel like this is one of those episodes that, even though it tells a full story, I could have seen them expanding it a little bit. I don't think this story hurt from the network TV aspect no, of it. I don't think so either. I think they were okay. This was like, okay, this one's made for, uh, you know, network TV more so than the previous story that really could have benefited from the R rated content. Uh, I felt for him, the whole brother thing. Uh, it's, it's a good haunting story. Uh, I like the way it ended. I, I thought uh, Cynthia Watros gets that moment of like evil there because I, I don't think she just loved her brother. I think she had some of those same tendencies too, which could have been interesting to explore. <laughs> Brady and, uh, says, "Yeah, I was gonna say like it's like you said I get to kill this one. I mean, there there had to be like mm-hmm. another story they could have gotten gone into, but uh, I like yeah. Dan's lady voice." thank you uh uh, i did did you laugh when he just like casually blackmails uh the the girl for like and another four grand to destroy destroy this team team. (laughs) fuck yeah get her because i don't think up to that point they did a good job like he's supposed to be this piece of shit but i was like okay so he he tortured some pervert to, to rescue a kid. Like, I'm not really exactly. Yeah, but he had a history of doing shit. It wasn't sure. just that guy. Well, shocker, well, they set, da- Dan's they, defending the cop. They set you up to like him. He just, I mean, if you got to. Right. <laughs> if you got to. Careful, a, Dan, your white showing. 
<laughs> Jack Noseworthy was a Flex your knee, Dan. serial killer <laughs> in this episode. Thank you very much. Uh, but yeah, no, I, I don't know. I, I never really like hated the guy uh, for the most part. I mean, yeah, obviously he got bitter and he started blackmailing uh, people. But I don't know. I never hated him. Uh, and I like this episode. I had a really good time. I thought it was well acted. I like the bullets in the teeth bit that they had. Again, it's not a gore episode, but I thought that was kind of a cool little visual. Uh, yeah, I enjoyed it. I actually enjoyed this one quite a bit. All right. All right. Well, Thanks, let's just rate this and get to our third one. What say you, Kruger? Um, two and a half out of five. Nothing fucking special, uh, at least in my opinion. What about you, Pugs? I am also a two and a half out of five. More kid death, please. <laughs> and Todd. I like this one a little a little better. I could go with two and a half, but because I did like it a little better, I'm going to give it a three. I'm at three and a half. It's not like a terribly scary episode, and that might have el- elevated it more, but I was engaged, and I did enjoy this one quite a bit, and it worked for the television format. As I yeah, said, it didn't but... feel like it had to hold back, which was nice. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it worked perfectly... Uh, perfectly fine under those television restrictions. So, uh, all right. I guess we'll move on to episode three now, um, which uh, is uh, Family Man from director Ronnie Yu. Uh, very hated or liked, depending <laughs> depending where you fall. I like that. him for the most part. Uh, Depending what movie you talk about, too. So, right, okay. yeah. that is and true. Love him, <laughs> Freddy versus Jason. He's all right. <laughs> Bride with the white hair. Mm. Uh, no, I know nothing from Dan. All right. Yeah, uh, I yeah I I don't have any real major issues with him. A lot of people hold the uh, Freddy versus Jason against him forever. So, um, but hey. I, I think they certainly could have done a worse job with Freddy versus Jason, so I won't uh, hate on the guy. For I love I love the movie, love but he movie fucked too. up with not uh, casting Kane, Kane Hodder, and I stand by that to this day. That would have made that movie fucking flawless. But do you know the uh, story about Kane wa- wanting questioning some likeness stuff on merchandise? So there is another potential. I don't give a fuck. That. I don't give a fuck. I don't want to yeah. hear it, Dan. I don't want to hear it. <laughs> Kane Hodder deserved a showdown with Robert Englund in that movie, and it is a fucking travesty that we will never get that. Um, as much as he's not my favorite Jason, I 100% agree with that. the Kane thing. I, I like C.J. Graham. It's probably my favorite yeah. interpretation of it. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, Kane carried the name and held the torch for Jason so long. He earned that spot. Well, I, I Like, for Kane... For me, I think he had some of the best kills in the franchise, and it, it was the way he delivered them and what he brought to the table as Jason is what makes me him my favorite. So I was all, I was definitely butthurt that two of my favorites weren't you know together uh, in the showdown of a century. But I do still like Freddy versus Jason a lot. It's let's, just that Jason okay. isn't my favorite to be honest. Let's let let's and, see if it gets held against him in this review. <laughs> Well, no one All takes right. a deep breath like Kane Hodder. I'll tell you that. Yeah, <laughs> yep. I used to. I when I used to wrestle, I stole that shit from mm-hmm. him. Uh, all right. Well, let's see if this this holds up. Family Man, uh, which follows a prisoner who must protect his family when he inadvertently switches plate switches bodies with a serial killer after a near death experience. Um, okay, Dan, so this is Dan, co- Dan just said he's glad it wasn't with the woman. <laughs> uh, so this is with uh, uh, Mick Garris again who writes all of these but uh, co-written by Daniel Knopf and if you don't know that name he is uh, he worked on in my opinion probably the best short lived show ever Carnival uh, which guy, if you haven't watched that show guys it's so fucking good and it deserved better than what it got uh, so alright Family Man uh, we have Clifton Collins Jr., a great character actor, is is uh, Richard Brodigan, uh, who was well, he was the killer starting out, and uh, then we have Colin Ferguson of Eureka fame on Sci Fi Channel, 
who played Dennis Mahoney, who was the uh, family man starting out. Uh, I liked seeing these two actors together. I thought they really gelled well in the uh, sort of face-off uh, scenario because they can both play nice guys. Uh, Colin Ferguson on, on Eureka was just sort of that likable everyman kind of sheriff. Uh, that was kind of a very fun, light, quirky show back in the day. And uh, Clifton Collins Jr. can do anything. Like Calls. He, yes. He, he Comedy, serious drama, he can pull it all off. So I really did really enjoy the actors in this one. And, uh, you know, pretty typical body switch kind of thing. We, we've seen this story before. There's nothing particularly original about it, but I certainly enjoyed watching it. Without Was a this- woman. <laughs> I'm I'm giving you these opportunities to talk shit on Freaky, and you're not even taking them. I Jesus was being said. nice. That's why I, I was no selling it. I don't like Freaky, but that's fine. Some people do. Uh, Cue the but, theme song. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Uh, but yeah, I I dug it. I mean, this kind of goes as you'd expect. I still really like the ending, though. I just thought that was like, oh, fuck, that guy can't catch a break. <laughs> I love the fucking ending, dude. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <It's him. laughs> I think he should have just ended it with, like, a, a head pat. Like, just oh, like... like- <laughs> Freeze frame Kirby enthusiasm music. (laughs) (laughs) That would have been so good. Uh, Was it that just knocked my rating down now? (laughs) (laughs) This could have gotten maybe a little more fucked up with the Masters of Horror format, but I don't know how far they would have gone with that. Also, Um, Mm. a little interesting, maybe. Some people could say unrealistic that because he kind of wanted to be a the, family man. The body part. swapping was unrealistic. Which part? No. Was <laughs> Once the killer was in his body for a little bit, he was kind of enjoying being a family man. He seemed to genuinely, obviously, he still is who he is, and things go horribly wrong as we see. But uh, I enjoyed this. I think the actors elevated a fairly simplistic switch story. But uh, uh, how about you, Kruger? What did you think? The acting definitely sets it above average for me. Um, like you said, I think, you know, the two people with the body swap thing going on, the way they faced off in those scenes were really, like, strong, probably some of the strongest in the uh, scenes in the episode. This is one for me, though, personally, where I, I was kind of disappointed and go farther. I mean, you have a child, uh, family annihilator, serial killer. Uh, I, I would have liked to see some, some Im- imagery go along with that, especially towards the end. So that kind of prevented get one me healed from... over, right? Yeah, when, but when the it, 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 like, yeah, but it, yeah, but it wasn't like. It was. It could have been disturbing. You know what I mean. Like there was definitely room for to make that seem more powerful than you know it could. But obviously, there's restrictions on it. I just. Uh, I wish that you know it got as fucked up as it you know kind of teased. Uh, so, but it is above average, and I did like it. Just uh, there's a lot of you know potential. I think that was wasted with it being a TV show and not you know. The HBO Masters of Horror episode. I think they could have went way farther if they're doing Masters of Horror. I mean, yeah, yeah th- this was actually probably my favorite one of the bunch so far. Although, and this may may sound like it's uh, me talking shit, but it's not because I made it in the best way. This really felt like a Freddy's episode, Freddy's Nightmares episode. And in fact, I think there's probably one very similar, but like the whole body swapping, the serial killer, it's very reminiscent of that. And and Dan's right. We've seen the body swapping thing done. Well, I, hundreds a, of times. Any horror series has a body, or sci-fi yeah. series for that yeah. matter, has that episode. Yeah. Um, did you guys have an issue with the wife a little bit, especially like when it became really obvious that something was terribly wrong? Uh, when he, you know, he's like trying to beat the shit out of the guy that takes the parking spot, well, or but he or, also just got done with 
a car accident and major yeah. trauma that, to the head, that changes your personality. So yeah. that's true. I like the baseball gag where he's just like, uh, it's like maybe you'll stop being so embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> he looks at the mom, right? <laughs> <laughs> like what? Why? Why? <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. I I thought this episode was great. Like, if you take away the body swapping, it would have been a great Law and Order SVU episode. So, like, that alone is going to get you high fucking praise from me. Um, yeah. I liked it a lot. But that the the reason that I love it is because of that ending. Because, yeah, we saw it coming. But, like, thank you for delivering what I wanted. <laughs> Minus the gore. Because, again, it could have been go- more gory. But I had a fucking blast with this episode. I'd watch this one over and over again. I love it. The potential for like a dark comedy really late. Oh my god! With this a <laughs> dark like, comedy. We have freaky dark, fucking yeah, asshole. Yeah, I was say, dark <laughs> comedy body swatching uh, movie. That's a good idea. Different though. Like he goes back to uh, jail and is like, I swear, I switched again. It's <laughs> it's okay well, now. We know what what Dan wanted to see: the body swapping in jail. <laughs> <laughs> god damn it! All right, what do you, what do you guys give it? Uh, I'm a three and a half on this one as well. Oh, actually, you know what? No, I'm a four on this one. I like this one a little. This is the best so far. I'm a four. Right. Uh, Our Kruger. Uh, I, I yeah, I am a three out of five. Uh, I think it's above average, but I, I, it's still uh, there is a lot to be desired still for me. Uh, what about you, Pugs? I liked it way too much, and I compared it to an episode of SVU. So. I'm going to give it a five. I love this episode. Nice. See, the one reason I'm not giving it a five is they didn't show us what were on those tapes they found. So because of that, it's only going to get a four. <laughs> Again, they could have like had him like pull up the tapes. Yeah. They told it's not us as bad as it looks. They told <laughs> us in, in cock tees, but they didn't show us. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, that's, uh, that's, that's all of did. them. <laughs> that's that's all of our episodes. Uh, we're going to be covering, stay tuned, we'll be doing episodes four through six next and covering the whole series. So we hope you enjoy this, um, and we hope you're having an awesome Halloween season. Uh, so ev- content every day, as you guys know, through October, and fleshwoundfeatures.com. Get your merch there and links to everything. Patreon.com slash fleshwoundfeatures. It all starts at just a buck, and we have a ton of content on there and coming uh, new content coming soon. So check that out. Uh, Horror Cartel Fleshwound Radio Facebook group. Fleshwound Radio on Twitter. We're on Twitch. We're on Discord, which is very active. We're on TikTok now, where you can see Kruger uh, review the song for this. <laughs> TikTok exclusive, where uh, Kruger... Uh, I think it, I think he needs to do the whole song though. So, <laughs> just listen to the whole thing. Uh, you paying so me, motherfucker? <laughs> you paying me? <laughs> it's a small Oh, I psyched you. Out. <laughs> <laughs> you fucking bastard. Uh, so that's all we that's all we got, uh, gentlemen. Say good night. Say good night. <laughs> Good Damn. night. Iris loves you. I'll go first. I was passing it yeah, to you first. Like normal. <laughs> Todd. Good evening. Stay Good evening. sick, motherfuckers. All right. I'll see you in Disneyland.